Ministry of Agriculture, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, and other stakeholders have been working to increase the production of cassava and the use of cassava byproducts in Barbados. The goal is to create a cassava industry which will result in large-scale farming, processing, and the increase of local consumption and exports. In this edition of AgroBeat, we'll explore what is being done to help Barbados achieve this. Here at the FAO, based on the request from the government and the Ministries of Agriculture, we have crafted a project entitled Processing and Market Development of Cassava. Within that project, we sought to develop products, um, provide support for product development, and focus on how do we get that to the market? How do we develop consumer demand for the product? In doing that, I have sought to focus on wheat flour. Taking a look at the import bill, wheat flour still stands at one of the top 10 products that we import, even here in Barbados. Therefore, we have also looked at the experiences in the region in developing cassava into new products. One of the things that has been successfully done was replacing wheat at a 40% as a greater product in bread making. And we've used cassava flour at 30% replacement in bread making to give us what would look like the same type of bread that you can continue to buy at present. Looking at that, we said, but how do we get the consumers to get into it? And we therefore engaged the services, not only of the Ministry of Agriculture, those of Cardi, as well as those of the BADMC, to look and identify and to start producing around the different areas. So today what we have is a national workshop with processors, um, mainly those who process cassava and some of the farmers, and one or two of the bakeries involved in producing bread. And specifically what we are seeking to do is to get some feedback um, on the issues related to the handling of cassava from the farmer, from harvesting and getting it to the processor, and the processor converting that product in a food safe way to provide to a bakery or to use to anyone else that needs to use cassava. Um, and essentially it is because cassava is a crop that spoils quickly when harvested. Cassava has a short shelf life. We also know because it contains some cyanide inside of it, it ferments extremely quickly. And in order to have a very safe product for consumers, um, we felt we needed to improve the capacity and knowledge of processors in how to harvest, how to handle, to minimize any risk to the consumer in providing a safe product that is also clean for consumption. Over the years, the FAO, through the Ministry of Agriculture, worked with local farmers to improve yields through irrigation, fertilization, weeding, and crop management. Our yields from cassava are not as high as we would like them to be. So what we're trying to do is to change the mindset of the farmers so that they can you know, try to produce the cassavas in terms of getting better yields and some of the things that can be done to increase our productivity would be to have a look at the spacings. Right now some farmers you will find plant cassava ranging between three to five feet apart within the rows. We are going to try to see if we can get them to plant the cassava a little closer, around two feet apart, so that we can, we'll be able to get more yield from the same acreage of land. In order to process, we need to have higher yields so that the farmer can gain more value for the product that he farms. So yield improvement and productivity and production is extremely important to make this a viable business for the farmer. We have some new varieties from Colombia, from SIAT, which is the, um, SIAT is the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. And they had, um, afforded us some 11 new varieties that are high yielding, they are low in the cyanide content, and three of the 11 are the beta carotene, have, are the beta carotene varieties. Varieties then that will have the beta carotene that, carotene that would look, you know, give you that orange kind of color, some of which you might find in the sweet potatoes that we already have. We can process flour, which will be used in the baking in industry. We also can use the cassava, the grated cassava, that would also be used in the baking industry as well as, you know, you can produce things like the cassava corn, which is a traditional thing that we do. You can also use it for cookies, and you can use 100% cassava flour for the production of our great cakes. 
So those are some of the products that we can use the flour for. In terms of animal feed, you can, besides using the tuber, you can also use the stems and the leaves that will, you can use a silage for animal feed and so on. The Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation, BADMC, produces byproducts from cassava and other root crops. They currently make coarse and fine flour, ice cream and pastries. The BGIS team visited the plant to get a first-hand view of cassava flour production. Our mandate is to provide some agricultural developmental work for the agricultural sector in Barbados. So currently, this plant produces sweet potato flour, breadfruit flour, cassava flour, both fine and coarse, cassava pancake mixes, cassava cornbread mixes, as well as a range of added value other products. So for instance, those products would include things like our cassava colado ice cream, the sweet potato and spice ice cream, we do cassava sponge cake, and, and several other products that we're working on coming through the pipeline that will be available on the market for the Barbados public to enjoy. There's a tremendous need for us to produce these added value products because, as you know, our food import bill is tremendously high. Um, our food figures are size $700 million a year. So in an effort to reduce our food import bill, we have to utilize our local crops. And particularly when it comes to the root crops, they are a valuable, nutritious source of food for our country. Now, when it comes to cassava and sweet potato in particular, those are two crops that are well known in Barbados. Most of us have grown up eating those products boiled, but the younger generation are more into the, the fast food type of thing. What we want to do is to innovate. We want to show that we can produce nutritious, tasty, and enjoyable foods from those root crops. We've worked with the BADMC. We've donated a machine for processing and grating cassava, and that is to allow for more efficient grinding of the cassava product in itself. And this process, even for today, allows BADMC to identify where contamination is possible and to improve the processes in handling the cassava. And it also extends to how they process their own cassava flour that they put on the market for consumers. With the push and the new demand, because the cost of cassava has gone up, to treat with that, we have indicated with the farmers that work with the ministry and the ministry to work with the farmers to improve productivity. The cost to the farmer is better and his revenue becomes better when he can produce more from the same space of land. And to do that, he has to begin to treat the crop like you treat other crops in the sense of you've got to have weed management. We have to introduce some level of irrigation in the first four months and we've got to manage the crop even if it requires us to put some periodic fertilization. We have demonstrated here at the farms, at four plantation farms in which BADMC was one, that with improved production practices, you get better yields from the cassava in the field. Although yields have increased, there are still a number of challenges players in the industry are experiencing. Some of the, the key challenges obviously has been the, the lack of water that has affected us in a tremendous way, believe it or not. Um, not only is there a, an outcry from residents in the northern, northeastern part of the island in terms of water for their homes, but clearly it has affected the farming community. Now, because of the lack of, of rain, we are going through a drought and the rainfall patterns over the last few years shows a steady decline. That has affected the crops. And because of that, that has affected them, our ability and the availability of the product to be purchased by us. So that has been, I think, perhaps the single biggest challenge. The one drawback to the to cassava productions that may be a hindrance to farmers is the length of time it needs to be in the field. And you might find that some farmers might prefer to grow crops that are of shorter durations because to get proper yields, well, good yields from cassava, you might have to grow it for periods of say six to nine months. Cassava has huge value added potential. It can be used to produce flour, bread, sweets, beer, animal feed and much more. Purity Bakeries Limited, a Barbadian company, offers a delicious cassava blended bread. They collaborated with the Ministry of Agriculture and the FAO on this project. We work now with Purity on the market development side because when the bread is made, we trained bakeries in 2015 and 2016 
in using both flour and grated cassava. And therefore, they now have a bread that they can put on the market and they can repeat consistently along the way. Very early on, we wanted to be a part of that. Uh, we made that decision. Um, however, we recognized that there were lots of challenges. Getting, you know, behind the farm gate, fully up to speed, the processing, the price points. And as I said, it really was a journey, a long journey. I, I think maybe as long as four plus years. And uh, along that way, the FAO uh, certainly became very involved and really played a pivotal role in terms of pulling all of the parties together to create harmony with respect to creating, finally, the product that's now on the shelf uh, in, in, in many retailers across the island, that being the blended cassava brand and the blended cassava white. Usually in Barbados, we use cassava to make pone. So it begs the question, why did Purity Bakeries decide to make bread? Pone typically has a very short shelf life. And, and so pone is, is really exceptional for, for if you're making it at home. If, if Grand Grand is making it and it's really, you know, it's phenomenal. We do make a pone, but not in great volumes because again, shelf life is a concern. Uh, so for us, we were on a journey with respect to our main brand, which is Wonder. And that journey was really tied to creating new products that would feature high levels of nutrition, low in cholesterol, you know, uh, zero trans fat, uh, high in fiber, low in sodium, low in sugars. And these are things that the nutritionists will talk about. It is better for us as a nation to use a locally produced ingredient than to import one and pay the foreign exchange to do so. And in the case of our uh, cassava blend products, you're talking about a 40% replacement. It's not minuscule, you know, we're not talking about two and five and ten. You know, quite literally almost half of that product is, is in terms of the core ingredient, is, is produced right here in Barbados. Ultimately, the aim of this project is to make cassava one of the island's staple crops. There are many benefits to using cassava and cassava byproducts. So cassava of itself is, is a high fiber product. It provides us with a lateral source of fiber compared to the imported wheat bran that we're going to get the fiber from. Cassava contains potassium. Cassava also has a source of magnesium inside of it. Cassava is a good source of your fiber, but it also is a very good source of energy. The portions that you require to eat cassava to get energy, you can eat one portion of cassava that will give you the energy of two portions of potato. And from that perspective, you can have a better portion control when you eat cassava as a blended product in bread or even as a product as part of your dish because you can eat less rice, less wheat flour and eat some of your natural local tuber products. It is hoped that by creating a local cassava industry, Barbadians' dependency on importing some food products would be reduced. So it's going to impact on your imports. It's also going to impact on revitalization of the agricultural sector. Sugar is becoming less competitive to produce. So what do we do with the land? And one option is cassava to transform the agricultural sector by stimulating growth. Um, we've done bread, but we've not only stopped at bread. Um, Purity is working on great cake. BADMC is working on great cake using grated cassava and cassava flour to make this very Bayesian product that is in demand, that has export potential. Um, we have worked with a small entrepreneur, she's making cassava muffins, and Coffee Bean Coffee Shop now receives, on a weekly basis, cassava fruit muffins made with local carambola fruit and local cassava as a gluten-free product at the coffee shop. So that just to demonstrate at different tiers in your population, products can be developed and promoted using cassava. So the next time you're out shopping, make a conscious effort to include cassava and cassava-based products in your food basket. You will be helping to build an industry.